Hey guys, so in this video I wanted to go over my journey of basically knowing absolutely nothing about programming to where I am today, which now I am a freelance uh, web developer, uh, specifically in the area of front end, but I've done full stack for several years. And I just wanted to go over my journey to that, and by the way, I'm self-taught. Um, I wanted to go over my journey because I want to inspire some people who may think that they can't teach themselves how to do it, or maybe they don't know where to start. So I'm going to go over my journey, and then I'm going to give my idea of what you should do if you don't know where to start. So I was, uh, it was 2014, I didn't know anything about programming, I didn't know what I wanted to do as a career, I was pretty broke, and I knew I needed to start working on a career. And my friend ended up buying me a 7x7 Rubik's Cube for my birthday. Now, I was already into solving Rubik's Cubes. I liked, um, I had a 3x3 Rubik's Cube that I would try to speed solve, and I started doing that. I mean, I've been doing that for years. But the 7x7 was really complicated, so I had to Google it and YouTube, and it, I spent like seven hours straight trying to solve this thing, and I finally got it. But when I was done, I realized that I had spent seven hours solving this Rubik's Cube, completely focused on it without thinking about anything else. And it made me realize I was pretty obsessed with solving that problem. And I just had an epiphany, and I realized that whatever career I needed to get into, I needed to get into a career that I could focus like I did on that Rubik's Cube, something where I'm solving a problem that I'm interested in. And so I just did some research online, and I found programming, and I had never done programming in the past at all. The only programming I had ever seen was ActionScript when I was working with Adobe Flash, but I literally looked at it and I said, no, I'm not gonna do that, that's crazy. <laughs> um, so I, I found programming online and I decided I wanted to give it a shot. So I YouTubed, um, I think it was computer science courses, free computer science courses on YouTube, and I ended up stumbling across a video from Harvard um, it was actually a playlist of their beginning um, computer science course. And the very first video he was talking about binary, and I realized I was really interested in this. So I decided to go to Code Academy, and I learned, I took the Python course, and I learned the basic syntax of Python, but afterwards I realized I had no idea what I'm supposed to do with Python. I learned Python, I knew how to do for loops, I knew how to make variables and do basic math and create objects, but... I had no idea what I was supposed to do with Python. <laughs> um, so I went to Reddit, Learn Programming Reddit, and I found a list of projects that you could make with Python. It was like a hundred projects that you could do on your own. And out of those hundred, I realized oh, I could only do about two or three of those. So even though I had learned Python, I didn't really understand programming as a whole. And so I realized I need to start learning other languages. Maybe that was a mistake, maybe it wasn't. Um, I actually think it was a great idea. So I took the HTML and CSS course on Code Academy, and I thought that was pretty interesting because I could have an idea in my head and I could actually make it happen on the screen in front of me. Unlike Python, where I didn't really know what I was supposed to create, I could just create for loops, but I couldn't really imagine anything and make it appear on the screen like I could with HTML and CSS. So after that, I was like, okay, I like the concept of being able to visualize and then program, but I don't really want to get into web development. That, that was my thought process. So I thought game development would be really interesting because it's the same idea of visualizing and creating it and seeing it appear in front of you, but it's not as boring as web development like I thought back then. So I got into, uh, I learned Unity, I downloaded Unity, and I learned C Sharp. And I really, really liked C Sharp. It was way more complicated than Python, but um, the fact that I went through and learned it, it taught me so much, and I actually got obsessed like I did that day with the Rubik's Cube and created a video game. I released it on the Android market. It did not do very well at all, <laughs> but I was really proud of myself. I spent two months on it, actually, and um, once I was done with that, I was like, well, I know C Sharp, so I started getting into Visual Studio and um, making, trying to make... Uh, Windows apps, but then I realized I don't re I'm not really interested in that, so I started getting back into Python. It was this huge juggling mess of going back and forth between languages. I ended up learning Java so I could do native Android development. And then at some point, uh, maybe a year, yeah, it was about a year and a half later after the, the Python, when I started learning Python, so it had been a year and a half, I decided I was going to go ahead and start getting into web development. So 
at the time, Ruby on Rails was a huge thing, and I learned that, but it still, it just didn't make sense because I didn't, there was so much you had to learn, and it just seemed like you were really limited to what you could do, and it just, it didn't click. Um, I went to Django because I already knew Python, and it was the same idea. I, I could create these things, but then I was like, how do I deploy this app? Why is it so complicated to deploy this app? Um, and so eventually, I found a tutorial series on Angular. And in order to learn Angular, I had to learn JavaScript. And so I did that. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is starting to make a lot more sense now. You could separate the back end and the front end, which you couldn't really do with uh, Ruby on Rails and Django. You could, but not by default. And I was like, okay, I really like this. You, you have a front end you can work on, and it communicates with the back end, which is completely separate. It doesn't even really have to understand anything about the back end. And it just, it really clicked in my head. And I was like, this is the one I'm going to start working in this and I'm going to start applying for jobs. So after maybe a month of really working hard in Angular and learning, I started applying for jobs all over the country. Actually, I, um, I lived in a state in the Southeast and I just applied everywhere for jobs all throughout the country. And the first one that was going to offer me a job, I was going to move there. <laughs> And I got a job offer in a different state, actually 1,500 miles away from the state I was in, and decided to take it because they were, it was pretty, I, I felt pretty optimistic that I was going to get the job. So I decided to take it. I moved there uh, and I started working. I worked really, 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 really hard for about a year and a half. And I learned way more than I thought I would ever learn about the software engineering process. It's not just about the code. It is not just about the code. That is the skill you have, but that's not going to be your job. It's going to be your job, but it's kind of hard to explain. When you get into web development as a job, coding is just a part of your job. Um, it's the reason why you're hired, but there's a lot more to it. And so I learned about all of that, and I had to learn Linux, and I had to learn how to rem uh, communicate with remote, remote servers, stuff I'd never learned before. And I felt like it really upgraded my skills. And I thought at the time, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and start freelancing. And so far, it's been great. I've been freelancing now for about a year. So that was my story. And now I kind of want to give you some advice if you are kind of in the same position that I was back in 2014. The first thing I'm going to say is a lot of people out there say, just pick a language. Just pick a language and just stick with it. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. Um, no. Because here's the thing. You say you pick C Sharp. You just pick C Sharp. And you start programming in it. You're really limited with C Sharp. I mean, you can kind of do everything with C Sharp. You can, um, you can get things that make C Sharp compile into different languages. And, and that's all great. But, you know, learn C Sharp. Learn from it. Learn from the experience of learning in C Sharp. And then learn something else and then keep doing that until you find something you're really interested in doing. And then when you feel like you really found something you're interested in doing, focus on that. And not just on the technical aspect, but research the, the, the workflows, the, um, the technology surrounding it. For instance, if you're into web development, you're going to want to learn about web APIs and you're going to want to learn about... Um, the demands of customers and how they may have an idea in their head, but in reality, you know, they may think it's, oh, this is a six hour job, but in fact, it's more like two weeks worth of work. Uh, you're gonna wanna learn testing frameworks and all sorts of different things. So when you find what you like, that's when you wanna start digging in, but don't just pick a language and, and, and stick with it. I disagree with that. Another thing is reach out to forums. I especially love Reddit. If it weren't for learn programming, I probably wouldn't have gotten to where I am now. There was a lot of help there and people are really willing to give advice and also try to give back because when you give back, you end up creating a conversation and you can even learn from that. And um, that's, that's uh, two things. Number three, read. <laughs> read books. I'm gonna show you a book really quick. This book right here. Um, it might not be the best one. It's Beginning Software Engineering by Rod Stevens, but it goes over 
a ridiculous amount of things that have to do with software engineering and barely has any code in it whatsoever. Um, you'll learn a lot from this kind of thing. And I would say learn different operating systems. Install Linux on your machine and try to use the terminal. Use Bash. Um, just get your hands dirty with all of this. And, you know, if at any point in the process you feel like, you know what, this isn't for me, take a break. Um, if, it, if you start to itch like you want to go back to it, go for it. Um, but, you know, don't give up. Don't feel like um, you, it's too exhausting, so it's not for me. That's not what I mean by it's not for me. What I mean by it's not for me is, you know, if you can't look at a screen for eight hours at a time, if you if you try that and you just really do not enjoy it, if you are like, I can't stand this, then definitely take a break. But if you're just constantly thinking, man, this is too complicated, I like it, but it's maybe I'm not smart enough, don't give up. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this video, but um, the next video I'm going to do like this is going to be the top five books that I think every web developer should read, or at least every aspiring web developer should read. And I think that you're going to get a lot of um, good recommendations from that, and I really highly recommend you check that video out when it's out. I'll put it in a um, end screen on this video when it does come out. But I just wanted to thank you, thank all of you for watching my videos, and you guys have a great day.